Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Nikon EM. It was made from 1979 to 1982. There was stock in the pipeline uh, well into 1984. It's an entry-level camera. It's aperture priority only. Uh, they marketed it to beginners and to women. It's smaller and lighter than uh, the professional F series does have the, uh, I think what they call it Duralumin, the copper aluminum chassis, but the top and the bottom are fiberglass reinforced plastic. Uh, it has a uh, Seiko stepless shutter, goes from one second to one one thousandth of a second plus bulb. It does lock up the mirror uh, when you're using bulb, so that's kind of nice. Requires two 1.5 volt batteries. Uh, thankfully, any LR44, SR44 works. You don't have to worry about mercury batteries or anything like that. It does require batteries except for bulb and for the setting over here, M90. And those are your choices, auto, M90, and bulb. I don't have a repair manual for this. I probably need to get one, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, but according to the repair manual, if you have the battery out of the camera and you're set to the auto setting, the shutter will fire at a thousandth of a second, approximately a thousandth of a second. Metering is with a uh, center-weighted silicon photodiode, so that's nice. The silicon responds a lot faster uh, than cadmium sulfide. Uh, it's through the lens metering and the button on the front here is for backlight. Uh, it gives you exposure com exposure compensation plus two. You set your ISO by lifting this dial and turning it. That's fairly standard. Um, and it's in third stops. Only full stops are marked. Uh, it goes from ISO 25 to ISO 1600. So you could also do uh, a more granular uh, exposure compensation by third stops just by fiddling with the uh, ISO setting. The viewfinder is pretty nice. Uh, it's 0.86x magnification when you have a 50 millimeter lens on it. Uh, it gives you the shutter speeds along the left, has a needle that goes up and down, and then it's got kind of a black section that shows you that it's set to uh, at a speed that will sync with flash. Normally these will beep if the shutter speed needs to be higher than a thousandth or less than a thirtieth. And if you have one of the two compatible flashes, the SB10 or the SBE, there's a flash ready LED next to that black section along the left of the viewfinder. And with one of those flashes, you can leave it on auto. It, defect, it detects that the flash is on and automatically sets it to the 90th of a second sync speed. It has a fixed K focus screen with a split image and a micro prism and a matte field. And has a 12 millimeter uh, circle in the middle, letting you know the area that it's going to more heavily weight for the center weighted metering has this 10 second self timer here on the front. It is threaded for a cable release. There is a battery check button here and a little red LED on the top. The E-series lenses uh, came out about the same time as this camera. Um, because it doesn't say Nikkor on them, a lot of people hate them. I found them to be pretty sharp and they're really, really nice and compact. This is the early E-series lens because your depth of field here on the top, it only shows you the depth of field for f11 and f22. Later one, they would show you the depth of field for f11, f16, and f22. Close focus is to two feet. While I was shooting with this guy, I did develop a problem. And I'll see if it's going to do it now. So right now, with a half press, which enables the metering, and it leaves it on for 20 seconds after. Uh, this is telling me it's about a 60th of a second at f1.8. It's fairly dim here in the den. That's probably about right, but it's 
a bit longer than a 60th of a second. I'm not sure what's going on with that. It still hasn't closed. That could explain why the uh, found film that I uh, developed, it finally closed. A lot of them have really crazy squiggles on them. And I have a feeling it was developing that problem. There's a couple of things that it could be. Um, it is metering, metering correctly, so it seems to be listening to this ISO setting. And it seems that uh, it's picking up the uh, aperture. A lot of times uh, this will get kind of sticky. And this one had a problem. where this was not returning, but I just worked it a bunch of times and it's happening. Because it's metering correctly, I don't know. I'm going to have to tear into it, sadly. It's kind of funny because this is the second one of these that I got. The first one I got from Goodwill's online site. You can't really ask questions about it. You can't always see the pictures that clearly. And this one is missing the rewind and I'm not sure what's going on here, but Hopefully, uh, at the very least, I can combine the two and get one that works right. So I did avail myself of taking out the battery, shooting at what I hope is about a thousandth of a second, and then using a ninetieth of a second. You know, it's a fairly good middle-of-the-road uh, shutter speed because you can stop all the way down to f22. So it was usable, but barely and sadly I already had film loaded before I realized that the shutter was lagging like that. Anyway, I obviously I'm not going to shoot with this again right away. I'm going to tear into it and see what I can do. So on to the next camera and I will see you then.